Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we will be reviewing the CR scan Raptor made by Creality. It is a hybrid blue laser and a knee infrared 3D scanner, apparently capable of metrology grade accuracy. So it's a box in a box, I guess. So unpacking the box, we've got this hard case, pretty solidly built, with the Creality logo on the front. And inside we've got the 3D scanner along with a bunch of accessories. Which... So starting off with the scanner, it is pretty lightweight. It's got the two cameras, the laser, and a projector used for probably the new infrared technology. On the back, we've got a few buttons. It's the start and stop scanning button. We've got zoom and also the brightness and exposure settings for the scanner. In the next box, we've got a cable of some sort. This looks like it's the main power adapter, which is rated for 12 volts at 2 amps, if anyone's wondering. In the next box, we've got a USB 3 connector as, as well as some sort of connector, we'll see what that does. In the next box, we've got power plugs in different flavors. So you've got Australia, you've got, I think that's America, you've got Europe, and... I hope you got an electricity license for that. So even deeper in the box, we're going to have to set the scanner aside. Taking the foam out, we've got more stuff. This, I believe, is a scanning mat. It's made of silicone. We've got the instruction for the scanner in the following languages. Yeah, who, who reads instructions? We've got our glass calibration plate. It's very important to keep this clean and not damaged. So we will place it on the side carefully. Nice to include silica gel to make sure there's no moisture. And a bunch of other stuff. Let's have a look. It's a shame we have to rip this nice velvety plastic bag, but... Alright, so we've got a USB-C to USB-3 adapter. We've got an after sale service card, which probably is all the warranty and stuff. We have some wipes for the glass. We've got a qualified certificate. Oh, interesting. And a bunch of tiny scan markers. I wonder if this will work with the slightly bigger ones. I believe these ones are 5 millimeters and 8 or 10. I don't know. I'll have a look. Right, so after installing the Creality CR scan software, we will need to connect the scanner to our computer to begin scanning and calibration and whatever else we have to do. Right, so in order to plug in the scanner, we require this power adapter to power the electronics inside the unit, which connects to this cable. And then this USB free cable goes directly to the scanner and our computer. So here's the scanner. Over here you can see it's actually a type C USB connector with screws to make sure it doesn't fall out during any scanning operations, which is good. It also minimizes the chances of this breaking in case it gets snagged or something happens. You can see we've got a green light which is flashing but we still have not connected this to the PC. 
which is our laptop in this case. So let's just connect it into a USB free port. You can hear the computer has recognized the device and before the first usage we need to remove these foils which are protecting the lenses. Over on this side we've got a little silicon plug which once removed reveals a thread which can be used to secure the scanner to a tripod or the Creality Scan Bridge which I do not have. Once you launch the Creality Scan software and are connected to the internet you may be prompted to upgrade the software or the firmware of the scanner. In my case there was a new update to the firmware. Once the process is done you will hear your device disconnect and reconnect to your computer and you are now ready to calibrate your scanner. First of all scan the QR code on the back of the calibration plate and follow the instructions given on the screen. So the first mode I'm going to use to test the Creality Scan Raptor is the IR mode with geometry, no tracking markers. As you can see it does a pretty good job with the tracking, however due to the complex geometry of this OWL model you can see it starts to lose tracking and produce bad data. However, this bad data can easily be removed by pressing the undo button and continuing the scan. If I had used the... Uh, if I would have chosen tracking with scan markers, I'm pretty sure there would be no problem with the scan. Once you are happy with the amount of data collected, you can hit complete scan and it will start to generate the point clouds, after which you can optimize the point clouds to the desired resolution. As you can see here is the optimized scan of the owl with texture mapping. You can see the scanner has done a very good job at capturing the texture and the geometry looks quite good however a few spots have issues either from tracking problems or the fact that the object had shiny and black surfaces which the IR mode definitely does not like. To fix this you can use a scanning spray, so you will need a transparent spray designed specially for scanning. Now for the reason I bought this scanner, the laser scanning mode. To use the laser scanning mode we will require markers, and I mean a lot of markers. Otherwise the scanner will start to lose tracking and that is the last thing you want. It is best to use something magnetic like the whiteboard, which you can use magnetic markers with, along with some scanning blocks or towers, depending on the part geometry. This is to ensure we have enough markers vertically, as when we need to tilt the scanner to get the side, to scan any side geometry, we may lose tracking. Once you finish scanning before completing the scan, make sure all the areas which you wanted to scan are there. If you need to scan the underside of the object, you will need to flip it over and do another scan. One thing I would like to see added to the software is a polygonal lasso tool, as this would make cleaning up scans much easier. This would make it very easy to edit data which has very straight edges. By holding the shift or control key, we can select scan data for editing. You can either directly delete the selected data or you can press the invert selection button to highlight everything outside of your selection. This is especially useful if you got a lot of stray data which you need to remove. Now before finalizing the model I will need to scan the underside of the object. So all I've done is flip the object upside down, placed a few markers on top of it and started to scan. You can see with the amount of markers we have, we have very little tracking loss. You can see the scan was done pretty fast, although the video is 10 times speed. Once the optimization has completed, we load in the second scan and click on the Merge Point Clouds button. Here you have an automatic merging option as well as a manual. The automatic is a hit or miss, it works sometimes but not always. You can always use the manual alignment method by selecting common scan data points.
I use this mesh to reverse engineer our replacement part for the router. As you can see I've printed it with the K2 in ABS and it came out very good. Now for our more complex example. Here I use the sticker markers as they are much more flat and you can stick them onto any surface. You do need quite a bit of them as the scanner requires four scan markers to be visible at all times otherwise it will lose tracking. For this part I needed three scans to completely capture all the geometry. Placing it on the side made it very easy to align the parts. As placing this part vertically would require very tall scan marking towers which would make the process a bit more complicated. As you can see even with all of these markers I was still losing tracking. In order to stop this I would have needed more markers placed higher above the model. This is because when you tilt the scanner the field of view changes and you won't be able to see the markers which are laid flat. Here I am manually aligning two of the scans. The software does a good job at getting everything aligned. After waiting around 10 minutes, we'll hear a sound which lets you know the process is complete. As you can see the software did a very good job at removing the scan markers from most of the surfaces, although some of them still stayed. It patched up most of the holes, but as you can see where I was missing too much data, it didn't come out very well. Now normally for this type of mesh you would use it for reverse engineering anyway, so most of the holes you could fix. However, as this is quite a complex part and it would take quite a bit of time to do this properly, I just decided to create it as a solid mesh and just fix the little clips inside. It was printed in ABS but as you can see the print orientation did make it quite stripy and rough on one of the surfaces. But that can be sanded down or fixed using some sort of putty. I accidentally broke off a piece of the model which you can see in the video so I will have to reprint that at a different orientation as it was too weak and then glue it to the rest of the model. The Creality K2 Plus did a very good job at printing this ABS part without much warping. The heated chamber and build plate really do work wonders with this. After doing a bit of processing to the printed part, here it is. I do plan on using some putty and sanding it to achieve a very nice surface, so this is not the final part, but as you can see it fits very well and most importantly it functions. While it's not economically viable to repair such an item, just imagine all the unobtainium parts you can make with this. So I am actually quite satisfied with this scanner. When I initially bought it, there was no other scanners on the market that offered both laser and infrared scanning at this price range. The Metro X was months away from release, but I can't say much about it considering the fact I've never used it. So the pros of the Creality Scan Raptor are, it has both laser and infrared scanning modes. It has seven blue parallel laser lines which do quite a good job at scanning the objects. However, if there would be a way to select only a single line, it would be very good for scanning any sort of deep holes or hard to reach geometries. It can scan objects from 5mm all the way to 2 meters. It has anti-shaking built in for smooth scanning. It can scan black or metal objects without sprays, but not always. It supports full color geometry scanning. It is lightweight and compact, weighing only 372 grams. The Creality scan software is quite simple to use and runs quite well on old hardware and there isn't much tracking problems with the Creality software. The cons are it's only got 7 parallel lasers, unlike the Scan Raptor X or the Metro X, meaning the scanning speeds are much slower. Also not being able to select a single laser line like in the more expensive scanners also means you will have problems scanning deeper holes. The software lacks a few simple tools such as the polygonal lasso tool which will make it much easier to select geometry with straight edges. The scan interface is too dark making it difficult to modify point clouds. Maybe if the user could set the color of the background or the transparency of the point clouds it would make it much easier to use. While there are other scanners like the Revo Point Metro X which may be better than this, I have not tested them so I can't say anything about them. 
So to conclude, the Creality Scan Raptor is a very capable scanner, especially for the price. All the scans I did were very accurate for my needs. And it's good to have a different method of 3D scanning objects, as in some cases laser scanning is much better than structured light, especially when you consider how compact this scanner is. Anyway, thanks for watching.